week ago, I posted a video asking the viewers why they thought this was such a good engine. I mean, this is an extremely good engine in this 1983 300D with almost 200,000 miles. Now, when I went to check out the car and when I decided to purchase it was based on four indicators. Remember, I always like to get one of these with a strong engine because rebuilding these engines now is very, very expensive. So the first thing I checked was blow-by, and I did that by removing the cap with the engine running and just left the cap sitting down, and this cap literally would not move. The other thing I did is I opened up uh, the air filter housing and took a close look at the air filter. Now, if the air filter is all covered with oil, that's a sign of a lot of blow-by and a lot of excessive oil getting by the piston rings. So, you know, those two things checked out great. And then there was the evidence of hardly any oil leaks. And then, of course, the power. This thing had great power, even though the transmission was not shifting properly. And finally, it didn't smoke. It literally did not smoke. Come on, baby, when you the got hill. on no this smoke. thing hard oh, going yeah. up the hill, no there smoke. wasn't <laughs> even a puff, a puff. of this black smoke This would be when they really smoke. Wow. That's very <laughs> unusual. <laughs> for an old 300D with 200,000 miles. So I'm thinking, you know, there's something unique about this engine, and that's what I asked. So those indicators made it very obvious to me this was one really good engine. And in that quiz, I asked you to spot something. The evidence is something you'll see in this scene right here. So I know I had over 125 replies. And a lot of the answers were good, but they weren't the correct answer in terms of what you could visibly see that would let you know the reason why this engine is so good. A lot of people said, well, it had good maintenance, it had good oil changes, you know, the engine looks pretty good. But you don't have any proof of that. But what I was looking for was an answer that could prove to you that there's something about this engine that's very unique that probably is the reason why it is so strong. Now I've gone out today and I've cleaned this engine up a little bit and I'm gonna bring the camera back in here. We're gonna take another close look. I know some of you already know the answer because if you've looked at the comments that I posted today from the other video, there were about five or six people that guessed correctly. I think now you'll be able to see it more clearly since the engine is much cleaner than it was last week. Now what I want you to focus on is the valve cover. You're going to see something that looks a little bit different on most of these engines, and that's this right here. See this ridge line that comes across all the way from here all the way down? That ridge was not on the engines that were delivered with these cars when they were new. This is an indicator that this engine is a factory remanufactured engine that was installed later on in the life of this car. Now I'm going to be doing some research and find out when it was installed, but that right there, folks, if you see that on one of these old four or five cylinder diesels, that means it's a factory remanufactured engine. Now I've got another car outside that I want you to go take a look at and see if you can spot something unique about that one as well. Let me open up the hood of Winkle. This is my 1983 300 SD with the same engine in it that's in bubbles. And sure enough, take a close look. Look at the ridge along the valve cover. And this also is a very strong engine in this car. Isn't that amazing? What are the odds that I would have two 1983 Mercedes diesels, both with factory remanufactured engines?